we visited the Zamboanga Peninsula Exposition held in Manila in Mega Mall on August 1 to 5, 2019. As expected, it was a very colorful affair. There were lots of products featured from the Latin city of the Philippines, like food and handicrafts. There were also beautiful and hand-woven textiles. But of course, we went there for the blades. We checked out the offerings of Mindanao traditional blades and textiles. One of the few online shops selling blades from different traditional smithing communities in Mindanao. These blades are modern made, not vintage or antiques. Most can be displayed in beautiful frames, but all are definitely usable for its intended purposes, be it utilitarian or otherwise. We talked to the owner of Mindanao Traditional Blades and Textiles and learn more about these blades. Hi guys, welcome to our first episode of Pinoy Blade Hunter and with me is Yara. She is with Mindanao Blade and Textile, right? So she will explain to us, she will tell us uh, the different kinds of blades that they have here and uh, what they are called and what um, ethnic groups they belong to. So, uh, Yara? We have here the Kampilan. It's from the Maranao, Marawi of uh, Marawi City. These are Maranao. Usually, if it's uh, of Maranao tribe, the uh, the descriptions or the characteristic they have brass. All their blades has brass. Even if it's um, animal of animal bone, they have brass. I think it's with the production. They have a lot of metals in their area. And like this, yeah, it's the Maranao panabas also. Okay. It has uh, brass plating here. And carving, usually their carvings are inspired with their sari manok. That's why it's more of here. We also have the, from the Yakan tribe, this, uh, this, uh, this is the pira. Usually if it's from the Yakan tribe, it's of banati wood and uh, uh, rattan wrap or uway. This is the pira? And what is the, uh, would you say, characteristic of Pira? Usually Pira are utility blade. Mm. It's, uh, it is originated from the Yakans of the Basilan. Mm. And uh, they use it for coco, uh, copra, mm. and uh, rubber. Mm. Pira so, and Barong are utility blades of Otomon. Okay. Most of the blades are utility blades? Uh, the Barong usually. Mm. But others, like the Chris, they are for martial arts, mm -hmm. like for Kuntao Silat. This is Chris? Gunong. A Gunong. Gunong is smaller Chris, or it's a totally different thing. Yeah. It's like a dagger. Mm -hmm. This one is not utility. It's a more defense tool? Or? Yes, defense tool. But nowadays, the, the, they're using it for, as a token for generals in the armed forces. Mm -hmm. But in the olden days? They, mm -hmm. they use it to, for slashing. Mm -hmm. It's for the war. Mm -hmm. uh, these are Panday Tadi. Panday Tadi's work. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a uh, Tausug Smith mm -hmm. from Moholosulu. Mm -hmm. This is the Laring Laring. It's usually, Laring Laring means blade. In, mm -hmm. Sweeping belly. Laring Laring is local dialect nila for blade. Tausog. Mm. This is Tausog. And this is the Janap. <laughs> or Chopper. It's thick. Spine. Pilar Lubian 
Lubyan blade. It's made of carved mother shell pearl. The handles are also of mother shell. And the wood is um, uh, mangium, acacia mangium. Lubyan is the name of the artist. Yes. He's a retired military uh, from the Air Force. And then he used, he used to give tokens to his commander, Commander General of the Philippine Air Force. And sadly he passed away just yeah, recently. Yeah, yeah. This one is uh, Tausug Chris, full seco, <laughs> left handed. As you can see, the curvings are full. Panday Seco means uh, curve. curve. So, it's, it's the part of the blade. Mm. This is the Tawi Tawi with Nito from the islands uh, of Tawi Tawi. But we also call this Shamal because their tribe is called Shamal. But the origin is from Tawi Tawi, Bungao. So yung, the weaving is just from there. Yeah. So they do not do this kind of weaving anywhere else. In Batu Batu, especially, specifically in Batu Batu Tawi Tawi. This one is Espada Maranao from the influence of other other countries when they invaded Marawi and then the smith adapted on making like this. This one also. This one also. This, uh... My Maranao supply, uh, supplier called it Panapas but I told him it's like it's not Panapas it's like Golf, golf, golf inspired because it's similar to that one of the Persian, Persian and Malaysian. This one is um, an antique Tivoli blade. As you can see, it has bells, chains, uh, but the sheet uh, is of Maranao influence. This is an antique one. varieties of Kampilan. One is of Maranao tribe and this one is made by Subanen a Smith. And it's Subanen made, is from uh, up, upper portion of Sambuanga, Sambuanga Sur. It's made of um, carved mother, mother pearl shell and then this one. Usually it's of horse hair right? but now it's modernized. It's just a brush. The blade is 25 inches and then the handle is 10 inches, 35 inches. Is there a difference uh, between Subanen uh, Kampilan and Maranao Kampilan in terms of the blade? Uh, of the blade, usually this is more thicker. That is uh, thinner because it's, it is compensated with the length, it's mm -hmm. longer. This one, it looks like ordinary fish, but it's inside, it's <laughs> baby shark, <laughs> made by my panday of Sambonga. This one, custom, custom, ah, custom na. Okay. but it's made by Tausug Smith, mm -hmm. from his imagination, it's called Dragon Sword, panday tati. Thank you, Yara. Those are the uh, different kinds of blades that are available in Mindanao in, from different tribes. Yes. Different tribes and different craftsmen. As we all know, the, the industry of bladesmithing in the Philippines is already dying. And uh, please support our local uh, bladesmiths. Our organization tries to help, uh, to help the bladesmith or the pandai of different um, places in Mindanao, especially those who are affected by the war in Marawi, in Basilan, and in Albarca Basilan, and in Patiko Sulu. Please support us. Thank you. Thank you.